Hello, good morning. Um, so the talk is about semantic forms, um, the new features that have been introduced, and also uh, features that are still missing. So about us. Hi, uh, Yuri, thanks for the introduction. Uh, yes, my name is Yuri Karen. Um, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I guess, best, still best known as the author of Semantic Forms. I also uh, uh, created and run a, a, a media wiki and semantic media wiki consulting company called WikiWorks. Um, I do a lot of other extension development, and I wrote a book which came out uh, just about a year ago called Working with Media Wiki. I'm Himeshi. Uh, I study at the University of Morto in Sri Lanka. I was a Google Summer of Code this year, and my project was to implement section handling in the semantic forms ex extension, which was mentored by Yara. Mm, so since the beginning of semantic forms up to uh, version 2.6, it has been a system uh, only for editing template calls. But with the new section tag, uh, which I worked on, uh, paired sections too can now be uh, defined and edited, uh, not just templates. So this, uh, we believe, adds more flex flexibility and allows the defining of uh, more complete paid structures. The section tag, as I mentioned earlier, specifies a paid section in the form. So uh, if, you would, uh, if you would define a paid section uh, with a triple curly bracket se section followed by the name of the section that you want to include, uh, this would create a text area input in the form um, so that uh, the uh, section paid section content could be entered into it. So uh, the special create form uh, page was modified so that you can define uh, template, you can include templates as well as page sections. Uh, the allowed par parameters for the section tag uh, are these, uh, except for level, which is the size um, uh, size of the uh, uh, heading of the uh, section. Uh, all the others are same uh, as the same for the text area input that was there earlier. Um, so I have a small demo of this. Uh, so this is the uh, uh, special create form page, and uh, I'm just going to add the uh, book template that was that's uh, in the um, uh, quick start guide. Uh, So now if I uh, define a section um, called plot of the book, um, and then I add, th add the section to the form. Um, so here you can see the uh, section added uh, to the form. And these are the parameters that you can set. Uh, the level of the section, as I mentioned earlier, is the size of the heading uh, that you want in your form. And by default, it's set to. Um, so I'll just add another section. I already tried the demo on this. So. Um, so the form is created. And if you go to the um, form definitions, uh, definition text, um, you'll see that um, the sections have been added uh, with the triple curly bracket section tag. Um, so if a, if a section uh, is added to the end of the form, 
the free text input that is uh, entered will also be appended uh, to the uh, to the last section of the form. So uh, for the purpose of the demo, I'm just going to remove this. Um, so if I try to create a page with this. Um, as you can see, uh, we define the uh, level to be two. So uh, uh, you'll find uh, text area inputs to input both, both the f uh, plot section and the review section. Sorry. Oh, do you already you already have a book created with that form? Oh, okay, cool. That's easier. Uh, so just to clarify on what uh, what you said before, if you have a section as the last. Um okay, if you have a section as the last part of your form, then you shouldn't have a free text under that because uh the the system won't be able to distinguish what's in the last section versus what's in the free text um and by the way, you can also have sections above the um the the template or in between templates and that sort of thing, so it's a way to um sort of have multiple free text uh sections. Uh, portions within the, the same page, which is something people have asked about. Oh. <laughs> cool. I don't know if everyone can see this in the back, but this is basically a standard book form. Uh, the fields are author, genres, year, number of pages, and then there are new um, uh, free text uh, sections for plot and reviews. Oh, you, a question, yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, how is the this new feature is different from yeah the old way of defining this section, just having a big text uh, properties so uh, oh you mean text areas within a template uh, uh, that's right uh, well there are a number of r things uh, first is the fact that um, I don't know if you want to take this well uh, sorry sorry um, uh, uh, you can include more complex things within free text than you can within templates just because of the nature of wiki text um, where it can get complicated. I mean, as soon as you have a pipe in a uh, template parameter, everything gets uh, uh, gets shot. Um, uh, and then it's just, um, yeah, it's just a more standard way of, of, it allows for a more standard, I guess, less hacky way of doing things where the template is reserved for st really structured fields uh, and and you can have a more you know a, g a real general free text thing, um, you know Wikipedia style for uh, for the the more unstructured content content. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Let's see if it works. Huh? Okay. Well, you're editing the category. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. 
uh, she's just editing in the category so that th that page she just created will also be editable with a form. Cool. Yeah, you can see the the sections there and uh, uh, <laughs> well, I I yeah I mean I I uh maybe it's maybe it's book test demo or something like that just a different slightly different name um I don't know <laughs> sorry what how much time do we have okay well I th I think that's a good I think that's a good demo. You People can people got the idea, I think. Just imagine editing that with a form. Um, yeah, so you, you could uh, the paid schemas extension was also modified to include paid sections. Um, so uh, if you go to a category page and create a schema. Oh, it's working. Oh, is working. <laughs> So um, you can add templates and then sections. Um, yeah. Um, so I also, uh, uh, semantic forms extension did not have a uh, unit test scripts. Um, so um, as part of my project, I uh, also wrote some unit tests for the section tag, uh, which were the first unit tests for the sex, uh, semantic forms extension. So if you want to run the unit tests, you uh, should install PHP unit. And then uh, from the, uh, like any other uh, way you would run uh, unit tests, um, PHP unit test for MediaWiki, um, you can run this command. And uh, right now, the PHP unit tests only cover the section tag. Um, obviously, uh, it could use a lot more. Um, so this is about the section handling in paid schemas. Uh, there is a new section XML element that can be used to define sections in the schema. So you would, uh, you would uh, write a section and give the name of the section, and also specify the level of the section. And as earlier, uh, as it was earlier, uh, you can um, uh, use a special uh, edit schema page uh, to uh, um, add more sections and modify their attributes uh, to the forms that you have already created. Cool. Uh, yeah, the the section handling thing I think is really important. Uh, yeah. Oh, and I also want to say we actually. Um, uh, Semantic Media Week has a very uh, has has a very strong relationship with the uh, Google Summer of Code. Um, uh, I think about half the Google Summer of Code students we've had have have stayed within the uh, SMW community, including two of the core uh, Semantic Media Week developers. So I'd say that's pretty good odds. Uh, let's see. Uh, so okay. So quickly. Um, other things that have been added uh, for multiple instance templates. There's now uh, there's now an add another instance above item, and the the, the whole um, UI has become a little more streamlined with these nice um, um, hoverable images. Uh, and this this uh, is helpful when you have you know ten twenty etc instances, and you and you don't want to just add one at the bottom and uh, and drag it all the way to the top every time. Um, there's uh, the native handling f was improved for the uh, for um, uh, category input types, and uh, now I'm blanking on the person who did this. I wasn't involved in this at all. Uh, um, uh, sorry to whoever it was. Uh, uh, you can look it up in the documentation. Um, uh, but this is really great. The um, the uh, uh, it used to use the category tree extension, so you had to have that installed, and now it's it's uh, it's done natively using this uh, JavaScript library, and it, it looks a little nicer too, and it works a little better. Um, you can just keep uh, expanding it out, even if you have you know ten, twenty levels of subcategories. This this is for uh, if you don't know about the category and categories input types, uh, those are for um, um, selecting one or more categories for a given page.
uh, it's good for uh, you know hierarchical type data. Um, there is no this is a this is a, 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 a thumbs down thing I guess. Uh, there used to be a, a WYSIWYG support in semantic forms where each whoa where each text where hello where each text area could have its own editor um, you know spe special editor for uh, doing you know, bold italics and tables and all of that. Um, that was uh, based around three related WYSIWYG extensions, one of which is actually called WYSIWYG, uh, which is a little confusing. Uh, that was removed because they th th they were no longer maintained. It turns out WYSIWYG is, is, uh, has been sort of um, um, patched to keep working, but I, I wasn't, I, that I, I guess that wasn't the case at the time. Uh, but the real, Hello. Uh, the real goal will be to um, uh, to support visual editor. I'm, I'm talking about that next. Um, yeah. So what's missing? Visual editor support. This is a. If you're not aware of it, this is a, has been a big project uh, um, um, for uh, the Wikimedia Foundation. Probably their single biggest um, um, technical project uh, over the last. Uh, I don't know. Two or maybe even more years. Uh, and the idea is to have true WYSIWYG, built-in WYSIWYG support that really understands wiki text and, uh, and how the parser works and all of that. Um, it's still sort of in beta. I mean, you can use it on Wikipedia, but it's not enabled by default as far as I know. Um, um, it's not completely ready yet. Hopefully, hopefully sometime within the next year or so. Uh, that, that's going to be great. Um, and I, I don't know if, if, if people are really using it outside of Wikipedia yet. Uh, but it's really going to be uh, nice to be able to to do fully working. Um, it's this is working. For, okay, hello. Ooh. <laughs> wow. I feel I should I, like I should sing the rest of this uh, <laughs> presentation. Um, uh, yeah, so that's going to be cool when that's fully working. Uh, a possibly missing feature, and I, I, I wonder if anybody has any questions or comments about this specifically. There's this other extension that was sort of a big deal um, for Wikipedia and Wikimedia called Scribunto, which is better known as the thing that provides Lua support, uh, where uh, you can replace all the, the massive uh, of if and, uh, and while and all that kind of stuff within uh, Wikitext with um, you know, custom written scripts that uh, that have you know a full programming programming language set of um, uh, functionality. Uh, you can you can see it a little bit in use on Wikipedia templates. I was surprised when I looked this up that it's not uh, in more use. Uh, there's there's some special handling for um, images. Um, yeah, and no one has actually asked about as well. Maybe, or few people have asked about whether semantic forms or SMW itself will support it in any way, and I'm not even sure what it actually means to uh, to support it or to make use of it. Uh, so that's something I'm actually curious about. Uh, display aliases. This is something that came up on the mailing list recently, although people have talked about it for a while, and it's it could be really cool. Um, um, this is uh, the idea is these are just see as a drop down like Alice, Bob, Charlie, and they select one uh, behind the scenes. What shows up is some automatically generated value, like employee one, two, three, or whatever. Uh, and it's really useful when there are pages with automatically generated page titles. Uh, I mean, you know, with just names, there could be ambiguity. So you might want to have a unique identifier. Um, so that just makes it a lot easier for average users to, um, to deal with that kind of data. Uh, you can also have other uses, like adding an explanation right within the drop down so you know you have a, a drop down of um, uh, you know priority levels or something and it just says low medium high in the wiki text but then the drop down explains what each one means like you, you know this means that uh, it has to be done within a week or that kind of thing um, spreadsheet style editing uh, again, something that would be cool to do, it might be hard to do, uh, but all that stuff with multiple instance templates, uh, um, which is essentially creating a table of data within a page, uh, it would be cool if you could have a spreadsheet style thing where you just have a whole bunch of cells and you can edit each one individually. 
uh, that would definitely require some kind of JavaScript library or thing. Uh, it might be tricky uh, on an, in a number of ways to do that. Um, how to get involved? Uh, the best, you, there are a very variety of ways to get involved. The best are uh, via email, either send me an email or write to the mailing list uh, or write on the uh, Semantic Forms extension talk page, which is pretty lively. Uh, uh, if I don't respond, please feel free to keep pestering me. Sometimes I, it takes me a while, but, uh, but I, uh, that's fine to, to pester me. Um, yeah, and you can get involved in, an, in a whole number of ways. If you want to add a feature, which is great, and a lot of people actually do that. Um, just fix a bug. If you want to sponsor development, it wouldn't necessarily be me doing it, but I, I, you know, I can help coordinate that. Uh, uh, if you already have a code patch, ideally, it's better to contact me before you start writing too much code, but um, uh, any, any of that is welcome. Or if you have an idea for the next Google Summer of Code. Um, yeah, questions or comments for, for either of us? Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, sorry. Uh, Yuri's coordinating the questions, I guess. Uh, you, you said you want to integrate with the visual editor. Right. Visual editor is a full page editor, right? You see the f you see the web page, and you can change anything anywhere. Where's the form then? That is a good point. I mean, the idea is that it uh, it only supports editing for that one piece of text, whether it's a field of a template or, a, or now a page section. I'm not 100% sure the visual editor can even support that or whether it relies on the fact that it's dealing with an entire page. Um, other editors, like uh, the, uh, the CK editor thing, it was able to just take in a, an arbitrary piece of wiki text and only deal with that. So I'm hoping the same can be done, but there's a lot I don't know about how it works. A brief comment, the developer you didn't uh, come up with is Matthias Lidal. Yes, <laughs> so Matthias Lidal, yes. Thanks to him. And um, regarding Lua, I think Semantic Media Wiki could really benefit from having Lua-based uh, data access. So you write a Lua script which can directly access the data in the back end issue queries through an API-style interface rather than having to do that. But that's not false. But just the direction, maybe if someone's interested, that would be nice. Ah, Jeroen. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I really don't know how, how much of a sandbox Lua is in, whether it can query the database and that sort of thing. Yeah, that, that, that would certainly be interesting to, to do, yeah. Um, just as an outsider question, I mean, at what point would we want to use Lua versus writing an extension? Or I mean, that's, that's one of the things that's not entirely clear to me. At what point would you do, you know, X with tool Y in this whole environment? That uh, When I look at the, you know, forms and things, the feedbacks that I get from a lot of these questions, like, well, you could do it like this, or you could do it like that, or you could do it, you know, the third way. What is the preferred way? What What are the things that we should actually do? I mean, should we do it in Lua, or should we do it, you know, uh, in something else? Uh, yeah, I'm I'm very far from an expert on Lua, but I, I think there aren't that many cases where you would choose between Lua or an extension. I, I mean, um, really, Lua can only do text processing as far as I know. If it can do database access and that sort of thing, then it's a whole other story. Uh, but the, 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 the baseline thing it's intended to be for is to replace the, the, the massive use of parser functions, uh, like if and, and all the, the rest of the gang. So uh, talking about Lua, uh, MW James already poked at this a bit. And there is something in SMW that uh, attempts to be uh, low-level Lua library or, well, so something that wraps uh, the SMW API to some extent. Uh, so this is going in the direction of SMW providing Lua support, but this is still very, very experimental. So if you're a developer or you're curious, you can look at it, but it's not ready for usage yet. And I suspect it's not even enabled by default. And uh, to partially answer the, the last question, I think it's best if you wait until we have some real Lua support uh, in SMW before you start using this. Otherwise, you'll just end up having to redo things uh, later on. <laughs>